We just melted our gel fragments that we cut out of the agarose gel, um, our PCR, and you can see that if we hold it up to the light, that there is no actual chunks in there. It's all liquid now. So we're going to use this liquid. We're going to run that over a Zymo column, and all of the agarose um, should flow through, and our DNA is going to stick to the column, and then we can proceed as if it was a regular Zymo cleanup. So, I uh, always want to be very careful when you're looking at these tubes to make sure that there's no chunks because any chunks will clog your, your Zymo column. And, uh, that's just no good. So, come around here. So, I'm going to actually just give a quick little spin down that will dry them of the, that water that I put in there and it'll just spin all the, uh, the liquid down. So I don't have any beads all over the place, beads of liquid. So then I have samples two, three, and four. I'm going to grab my P1000, set it to the full 1000, and load all this liquid over my Zymo column. I'm using a Zymo column, again, very different from a mini prep column. Zymo columns are smaller, and they don't have, a, they just have a tab, they don't have the, the cap on them, so. This procedure calls for a Zymo column. So there is sample number one. Sample number two is going to go right next door. Or actually sample number three, I guess. So that's sample two, that's sample three. We lost sample one. Sample one did not work. There's number four. And now we just give them a 30 second spin down. So I'm going to change that to 30 seconds. I'm going to want to balance it. For this centrifuge, uh, when you have three samples, you just put a tube in, skip three, put a tube in, skip another three, and then you have uh, three in between every single one. Cap it, close it, uh, check to make sure everything is good, press start. And in a previous tutorial, I said you want to do, you can get away with 15 seconds. You really cannot get away with 15 seconds whenever you're doing a gel purification, just because the liquid is much thicker and there's so much more of it. So you really want to go for that full 30 seconds. I've had times where I've actually had to go like 45 or a minute just to get it all through. If you have a very, very thick, um, a very thick uh, melting product or whatever you call it. Uh, so we're almost done here. And I'm going to get my P1000 ready. I'm going to set this to 250 uh, for our two wash steps. This is very similar to a regular PCR cleanup. Um, except that because I was using a larger volume, I actually need to empty the flow through. You can see that these are very full. And actually, it looks like I might have to do a very quick spin because it didn't empty completely. So we'll give that another uh, 15 seconds. One, two, three. One, two, three. And okay, we'll just do a short spin. So I could set it to 15 seconds, or I could actually just hold this button that says short spin, and it will just start to go up. It'll accelerate uh, until I release it. It'll just you know, max out at its uh, top speed. So we'll just go to there, and it should actually have cleared all of the leftover. So I'm going to put my ADP back. My P1000 is set to 250. And I can kind of take a look inside of these tubes. They all look dry. And the flow through is empty, so I don't have to double check it. So I'm just going to pick up 250 and one. Two. Three, and I can reuse that same tip because I haven't really touched anything and contaminated it. I'm going to let this spin for 30 seconds. Get a new tip. And wait for that to spin down. So right now the PE is hopefully getting rid of any contaminants. Maybe if there's any excess uh, agarose that's left in there, hopefully it's flowing that through and we're going to be left with a bunch of PCR DNA that is stuck to the to that resin bed. So 
almost done. We're gonna do our second rinse. Again, we don't need to we don't need to uh, check the flow through columns because the total volume that we're adding here should be less than than the total capacity of that flow through. So that's three. I'm gonna cap that up. Spin it. Ditch the tip. Recap my TE. You don't want to leave this open for too long because uh, this wash buffer is mostly ethanol and it will evaporate. If it evaporates, you, you, know, you shouldn't be too worried about it, but uh, it can throw off some of the buffering conditions, and that's, that's just no good. So we put it here. And now, after this step, we're going to be emptying the flow through columns, and then we're going to be doing our drying step. So our centrifuge is slowing down right now. And again, as kind of a side note, you always want to be sure to cap your centrifuge with that little metal thing that I put on there, as well as make sure that it's balanced. So now we can take a look at our flow through columns. You can see there's our wash buffer, and we're just gonna put that in our liquid waste. So one, two, Cap it, double check, we'll double check that it's balanced. We're gonna cap it, close it, set this to 90, press start, and that's gonna spin down, get rid of any of that excess wash buffer. And while that's spinning down, we'll do a real quick review of the process so far. So we started off with some PCR DNA that was in a PCR strip. We then added our loading buffer to it, the blue stuff. We ran it on a gel. And then after the gel finished running, we took a picture of it. We saw what it looked like, it looked good. Then we actually cut out the bands that we wanted. We put those bands into a tube, added a little bit of ADD, agarose dissolving buffer, and then put that at 55 degrees Celsius for about 10 to 15 minutes. I shook it in the meantime. After that, we took our melted gel, the mixture of the gel, the DNA, and that ADD was like a yellow color and we ran it over our uh, Zymo columns. Uh, we discarded the flow through into our liquid waste, put it back into the centrifuge, added 250 microliters of PE, looks like this. That was our first rinse step, and then spun that for 30 seconds. Then we added a second 250 microliters of PE for our second wash step. That hopefully flowed through all the gunk and all the junk that we don't want. And then we discarded all of the 500 microliters of the wash into our liquid waste. And then now we are on the last five seconds of the drying step. So we should end up with a column that has been thoroughly rinsed and is dry. And this has a bunch of PCR DNA of the exact size that we want stuck to the column. So we're going to open up our center tube, open up our tubes and match the samples to the tube. So here is sample number two. That goes into that epi tube. Sample number three goes into epi tube number three. Always be careful here, make sure that you don't mix any of your samples up because that's a great way to screw up experiments. That's sample number four. And normally you're gonna to want to elute in the same volume that you started with, but I'm actually gonna concentrate my DNA a little bit. So instead of eluding with 50 microliters, I'm going to be eluding in, uh, I'm going to go with 17 microliters. It's kind of a random number, but I was having trouble deciding between 15 and 20. So 17 seems like a happy beginning to me. So I'm going to get my P20. I'm going to set that to 17. In the meantime, this is uh, really clean water. It's been double deionized and autoclaved. So it's sterile and very clean. And unscrew that. Take my 17 microliters. And I'm actually going to be very careful and I'm going to load that water right onto my column. Uh, you don't always have to be so careful with that, but this is kind of an important step for me, so I don't want to have any mistakes here. Um, sample number two, and this is the elution step. 
Again, normally I would be using 50 microliters at this step, but I need to concentrate my DNA. So I am doing 17 microliters. Eject it. So now we have a bunch of, or not a bunch, we have just a little bit of water that's soaked into that white part, and you can't even see it. There's uh, so little water in there. And it's right now, it's dissolving all the DNA that's stuck to that bed. And when we spin it, that uh, dissolved DNA is going to flow through. Now, I have caps on these tubes that have to remain open, and you want to line these up the right way. So if you look at the centrifuge, there's a little arrow right there. That arrow tells you which way this thing spins. This way, this thing spins that way. Uh, so we want the caps to point in the opposite direction so you can kind of, if you think like of a shooting star, the tail has to face backwards. If you put it like this, it'll go backwards and it'll snap and then your tubes will explode and it's just a huge mess, you don't want that. So you want to face them that way and you kind of support them, you rest them on the, uh, the walls in between the two openings. So you're going to cap, close, set that to 30 seconds, press start. And right now, while I was talking, the water had a chance uh, to, to dissolve all that DNA and it's going to be flowing through and we're going to end up with an epi tube with about 17 microliters worth of DNA. These have a, a slight void volume, the box says that they don't, but I think there's like a 1 microliter void volume, which means that if you put in 10 microliters, maybe get out 9 microliters, if you put in 20 microliters, probably get out, you know, 18 or 19 microliters. So these have finished spinning, our centrifuge is slowing down, and as soon as we open it up, we can take a look at our sample and you can see that we have about 17 microliters of DNA, and this has been gel purified, and it's ready to use for our next cloning step.